Hi everyone, and welcome to DIYing to Craft. My name is Sabrina, and I'm so happy you're here. If you're finding my channel for the first time, I hope you'll stay connected by liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. Help me grow here on YouTube by liking, subscribing, commenting, and sharing with your friends. Now it's time to craft. In this craft, I'm using popsicle sticks. As you can see, I have quite a few. I fussed around with this prior to filming and decided on the sizes and shapes shown. I then used these three pieces as my template. I picked these miter shears up at Lowe's for under $20. And I'm cutting everything at a 45 degree angle, except for the small square. If you notice here, I have a little bit of difficulty cutting this stick. It's not the shears, it's completely me. I have very weak hands. Once cut, the pieces do need a light sand to remove the rough edges. On average, I was able to get four pieces out of one stick. Two of the larger pieces and two of the smaller pieces. I didn't count how many sticks I used overall, but it was approximately a hundred. And there was a lot of cutting involved so I put a movie on and worked on the bulk of the cutting. The longest piece is just over an inch and a half. The small diamond is about one inch from the longest point and the square is just under a half inch. I have this round board from the Dollar Tree. It had a fall design that I thought I could remove, but it was harder than I expected, so I decided to use the back side instead. I painted it black to have a dark background should it peek through the design, which, spoiler alert, it does. Once the paint dries, I draw some guidelines to help keep me from wandering too far out of alignment.
My inspiration for this piece came from quilts and the patterns used to create them. So here you see me dry fitting the pieces to develop the pattern that I like. My hands are shaky, so I brought in some tweezers to assist with placement of the pieces. I had to play around with it a little bit just so I could find the best way to fit them together. Once I liked the way it was laid out, I started the gluing process. At first I thought I would spread the glue on each individual piece and that worked but it was very tedious. The next time I buy wood glue I'm going to get one that has a finer tip so it will save some time. You can see here why having those lines are very helpful to keep everything in a good spot. I do try to work with the wood tones so that there's some variation of color. Even though it's all, I believe, birch, 
there are some variations in the coloring. through the magic of video, it's all glued on. As I was cutting the pieces, I did save my scraps. So now I'm going to use those to fill in the edges. At first, I had thought I would like to just hang them over and have it pokey but I decided I did not like that and I wanted to cut them all flush with the edge of the round. So I'm dry fitting pieces, flipping it over, drawing a line so I know where to cut, and then cutting that piece with the miter shears. Again, they need a little sanding because they have rough edges. And then I glue them into place. Because I'm cutting them for each specific piece, I do need to cut, sand, and glue one at a time. I found that if I tried to do more than one, uh, I would lose the spot, and then I spent too much time trying to find the exact spot that I cut it for. Some of these pieces hang over the edge because like I said originally I thought I wanted it that way. But since I decided I don't, I use these nippers to just cut off the edges. I did have to apply a little bit of pressure for some of them, but not all of them. So I continued around the whole board, and here is the finished piece. I sprayed it with three coats of this clear glaze, sanding in between. I liked how the large round turned out, so I decided to use these small rounds to create some ornaments in the same style. I did need to cut a few more pieces, so that's what I'm doing here. Once I have my pieces cut, I now need to find the center or approximate center of the round I'm working with. So 
So just lay it out, kind of map out where the center would be, mark it, Like I did with the large round, I lay out my design first. It's a little hard to see here because they are all that similar wood tone. But I do end up liking the natural wood tone, so I don't paint this one or stain it. Once I have a pattern I like, I start the gluing. I also repeat this pattern on both sides of the round. I did make one other ornament design, which I didn't record, but here you see it matches a little better to the large round, and the pattern is on both sides. There's the smaller one with the repeating pattern, and then the large piece. The large round could be used as a decorative trivet or a wall hanging, which is what I plan to do with it. The ornaments could be an addition to your tree or a start for your Christmas gifts. Thank you so much for watching.